Welcome to this one-to-one. -one. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by an Aberdeen legend, a Gothenburg great. It's as simple as that. Alex McLeish is with me uh, to talk all things Aberdeen and, of course, that magnificent year, an unforgettable year of 1983 when probably a generation would not believe that Aberdeen, Dundee United were major forces domestically and of course in European football and I don't even think you in your most wildest of dreams Alec would have believed the year that was about to unfold No and uh, I don't think it probably ever happened again um, as, as we say in Scottish terms two wee diddy teams <laughs> from um, you know the outer cities and uh, Dundee, Dundee and Aberdeen to marvellous managers and um, fantastic footballers and and you know, we, we took it to the old firm as well. Yeah. Did you sense, and, and the funny thing about it was, I, I always think the key to it all was Fergie's attitude, which was, you know, classic, let's make sure that we nurture what's already here at Aberdeen. But there are some players yeah. that he, he, he got from the West that, you know, he was able to enhance. And of course, let's not forget, as many an Aberdeen player will say, Billy McNeil left them, not a bad side that he inherited. Billy, Billy left a, a really good side and we... We were learning all, all the time. I, you know, I, I wasn't quite in um, Billy's main plans. I, I, I got a, a real shock um, when I was in a New Year squad and uh, through the Petardry doors the 1st of January for training. And I said, the boss was waiting for me in the, in the hall, Billy McNeil, and he said, um, I said, Happy New Year, boss. And he says, Happy New Year. You're yourself, big man. You're playing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't believe it, and it, and it was against Dundee United yeah. and in um, front of a twenty five thousand crowd, and I was breaking it, and I was up, up just before my nineteenth birthday, I think, and and um, you know playing beside the great Willie Miller, and he, you know they they guided me through the whole thing, and uh, we we had a great famous one 0 victory over we had twenty five thousand crowd, and then Billy said to me the next couple of days, listen, I'm going to blood you slowly, you're not in the squad for the weekend. I what? <laughs> couldn't believe it, but it was probably, that well, it was man management, uh, brilliant man management, and, um, you know, sure enough, when Sir Alec came, then it was, I was starting to get in the team proper, you know. What was your early, indica what was your early thoughts on him? <laughs> well, you, you know, I was in the, the, the away dressing room with the, you know, the young guys and um, it was a first team dressing room and I was hearing things that the, the boss was comparing them to players that he'd coached before and um, Willie and a couple of them were snarling about that and, um, you know, they and eventually, and at Sir Alex being as good as, as he, you know, as it, it turned out to be unbelievable and um, he, he kind of knew what that he had to kind of pacify them a wee bit and and do a, a little bit more man management on them and and everybody all of a sudden started to get this feeling that um you know we could go down to glasgow and win and um that, that was the case because there was little perils of wisdom and but he always insisted on um tempo of, yeah. the, of the game um or the tempo of our passing the assertive passing i mean they, they he said these things time and time again and that always stuck with me when I uh, went into coaching and management. Yeah, did you sense when your players always know when they're looking around a dressing room you can have a manager who suddenly you know has got that special quality which you undoubtedly have but did you did you look at the dressing room and think wait a minute there's some right good players here did you sense there was something happening? Yeah um, without a doubt I, I mean having played that first game with, in, under Billy McNeil and uh, playing with Wally and it just in front of 25 thousand crowd at a full house and uh, it, it was just like something that I wanted to do every single week and the inspiration that that game gave me and then to play uh, alongside these players I watched the, the team um, in midweeks when I wasn't playing with my junior team and then I, I got moved up to the reserves I, I was I was out and loaned to a, a junior team for a year and um uh, you know, I met some great characters in that. You learn a wee bit more about football and uh, and uh, the characters in it. And then going back in with uh, Saray and 
playing seeing these plays in midweek when I went to the games in midweek and I thought fuck I couldn't take my eyes off Wally Miller you know he, he just like defended so well and he he knew how to get fouls you know he, he always he, he wasn't the quickest and, and sprint away from people he would kind of go across them so that he would <laughs> induce the foul you know he, he was very very clever but um, then you know guys like Stuart Kennedy was a bit of a mentor and um, they, I knew that these these guys were destined for success and I'd just come from boys club success and I thought well why can't it continue you know and I, I was getting that feeling that you know I think my lifting trophies is going to continue yeah the other great thing about that dressing room was it was um, different characters different personalities um, because I, I, I do think you're different from Willie because I, I, I think you know if, when someone says to me I think of Alex McLeish I think right great player really successful manager great noise up <laughs> Because every player I speak to said you were always at the wind up with them. They were actually on DEFCON one, and you probably weren't the only one. There were so many of them in there. Aye, oh no, no, it was great. That you know, Gordon was uh, was incredible with the sarcasm and that, and he was so so funny. You know, they say what was it they say about sarcasm? It's the most form, form of, of wit. wit, but the greatest form of intelligence. <laughs> yes. really. And 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 so that was V strikes, and uh, but. There was others, you know, kind of joined in and, and throwing me hand grenades in now and again and um, the dressing room was, was vibrant and, you know, uh, Peter Weir also was, was one of Sir Alex's uh, great players. Peter and I went to school together. Wow. Uh, in, in Barhead. He wasn't a bad swap, was he? What a player, honestly. Peter, two-footed, a bit like the kind of, the mod, if you go to the modern day, the loud drops, you know, that yeah. kind of um, equality. Yeah, I, I mean, two two quick points on that. I mean, I thought Scan was a great player. I thought Ian Scanlon was Aye. magic, wasn't he? Well, Dingus would probably tell you that, you know, every time he ran in the box. Or, or, did they play? The, I'm trying to, Try to remember think of the time they, have they played. They, they played together. Or, or anyway, whoever our strikers were, they were always saying Scan because he always checked back. Check back. <laughs> They'd go again, so they'd go again, and he checked back. They'd come back, they'd go again. <laughs> Put that ball in the box, you know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure Dingus was. Yeah, he was. You know, yeah, he was. Yeah. Dingus was in the end of that, and I think I'm sure he moaned about it a few times. And um, but Scan was a very mercurial player, and you know, exciting, you know. Yeah. Great. And and with that in mind, uh, you know, even before we get to that Cup Winners Cup season. Suddenly, he's managed to break the stranglehold, and he had that. Uh, Sir Alex had that psychology. Did you sense that it was just that that man management to instill the belief to create that siege mentality? <coughs> yeah, because you know what he, he was saying. He was always talking about the West of Scotland press. I mean, that's that's um, that's not like um, as, as if it's not common knowledge. Everybody knows that now. Back in the day, when um, you know other players have spoken about it for years that there was that that was his his stance in the dressing room and uh, they all hate you doing there you know and, and it was just extra mo motivation and uh, you know we we started to get that in our genes you know yeah yeah did you did you respond to him in that did you, uh, here's the here's the, the the great line when i said to john mcmaster did you get the hair dryer he went no i get the furnace <laughs> <laughs> Hair dryer would run out of power. He said, "I get a furnace." <laughs> How did you respond? To it? Did you get the hair dryer? Ah, yeah, yeah, many times. I mean, I maybe in, in, with two hands, I could probably get into the the second hand and say maybe six times or something like. That. But well, he was maybe lower, and um, it, the the creative players, you know, he. <laughs> <laughs> he had set to us uh, with the creative players because he just wanted them to produce brilliance, you know, all the time. And, um, you know, that we obviously you can't be perfect, but we had pretty close to brilliance. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can remember the the, the run um, from him on the Easter Road pitch when they finally broke the, broke in the stranglehold of Rangers and Celtic, won the title. And then with that, the team evolves. And, and suddenly you've got players, young players in there, a great mix of a wee bit of experience as well. Suddenly you're in a situation where, you know, you're contesting cups, you're contesting mm -hmm. league cups with Dundee United, you're, you're finding yourself in finals against Rangers. 
Yeah. Yeah, we, we um, in, in 82, I think, um, the first uh, by Gordon Smith, that would, they scored, Rangers scored first, Gordon Dale, Gordon Smith, they uh, ran past me, says um, he was never winning Glasgow. And uh, <laughs> at the end of the game, I, I, the first person I looked for was Big God. <laughs> Of course, when I think and, of cup and, and finals, I keep going on to this day. You know, <laughs> I, I keep reminding him of that one. When I think of cup finals, though, what a goal he scored! I know. I was, um, you know, I've seen, I've seen one similar in the weekend, and uh, I thought, wow, that's the, that's top bin, you know. <laughs> and, and actually, it went on that um, soccer AM yeah, a few years ago with uh, Fenners, you know, and. I thought they, they God, they're going to make me, you know, shoot into the the goals. The goals, and, yeah. And I thought, I've got my brogues on. <laughs> I didn't have my trainers on. Right? <laughs> so rewind and uh, the the brogues put the ball in the tap bin. Brilliant. <laughs> and the funny thing is, though, you, yeah. you did so, you not start out in midfield though? I, I was <clears throat> not. I was my last days at the boys' clubs, Glasgow United. I was. Um, Playing kind of centre back, yeah. sweeper, each kind of role. I was taking um, a height, kind of five or six inches, you know, from 14 to six, 17, yeah. 16. And uh, I, grad I was gradually moving back, so I was playing kind of centre back role with United, guys United in my, my last games. But um, the boss, just, I, I did play midfield. <clears throat> As a, a younger player and uh, at school and centre forward, primary school. Right. So that was the days of you know Pierre Weir and I first kind of hooking up. Um, so the midfield role, Sir Alex said one day, um, I want you to be a scarf and Tommy Burns. Net, you're playing midfield because Willie Garner and Willie Miller were centre backs at yeah. the time, and. Uh, I, I, I guess that that was I've got a man man mark told me at the game, <laughs> <laughs> and and it wasn't there you know it wasn't there felt um, you know bad fouls or anything like that you yeah. know you no know, filthy tricks but it was um, you know I, I tried to stop Tommy from doing what he did really well yeah how special was Willie Miller for you because you've you've already mentioned the great thing about him was he had that ability to talk you through a game. Um, and we always thought he also had that great ability to referee a game because he was on everybody's case, wasn't he? No, that, that, he's famous for that, isn't he? You know, they, he'll be around, renowned for that um, referee thing, the, the Aberdeen's 12th man. But he, he was, um, you know, a good talker. He was, you know, he wasn't there, like um, severe and harsh, you know. It was, yeah. It was more um, gay a look if you wanted to do the right thing, but it was more. Um, that he just seemed to be always in the right place and we had <laughs> the system was I like you go and get the heaters and I'll sweep them up sweep up behind you, know, you. If you miss any I'm behind you yeah uh, and uh, sure enough the head waiter was there waiting <laughs> um, every time I, I had a miss header or didn't win it and a flick on or whatever he was reading it you know so um, but he, he really was um you know, fan a fantastic individual in that particular role in that particular era. Yeah, and the 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 amazing thing about it was, apart from anything else, Fergie's demands on the team were incredible. I, I mean, I have to tell you, Mark McGee tells me a great story where you and him went for sweeties, and the bus left without you. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, this, this was. I mean, we couldn't believe it. We got to Petardry and what's the bus? <laughs> a couple of minutes late and uh, the bus had gone. So <laughs> I don't know. We didn't have mobile phones. How did we get in touch? And anyway, I think the secretary or something says, uh, he, the boss says you just go to drive down and catch the bus. Catch up with it. <laughs> so I think it was four for wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, you eventually caught up with it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we own the bus and you're kind of... You know, really, can I say shit myself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and walking on the bus as, as to what he's going to do. And uh, as soon as we got on the bus, we kind of went to engage him. He said, get up the bloody back. 
<laughs> and get on the bus, he used to use, use, use a friend and, you know, so we had to think about a fine while we were playing football that same day, but the one thing was for sure that we had to put on good performances <laughs> that, that particular day. Yeah, and of course cup finals because I think the, the, the great thing, when I'm remembering all these stories that were coming through, Gordon said, <laughs> the day that he had a rant when he said only Miller and McLeish played well in the cup final, I think the boys, they were absolutely gobsmacked by him, weren't they? Oh God, aye, yeah, because um, I'd, I'd milked it a wee bit with the base of the cup. I went round the stadium, I went in to see, you know, the, the invalid section, you know, the people in the wheelchairs and post photos and that. And it, oh, it must have been 10 minutes after they all, the, the players all get in. I went in with the base of the cup and uh, opened the door, morgue. It's really, really quiet and uh, what the hell was up? Aye. We got the fucking him, fucking him. <laughs> the boss had by that time had had a blast at them and they'd gone into the the, the Hamden um, showers and that, that area. Yeah. And uh, he said, I said, well, what, what happened? The boss said, he says, only you and Wally done well. I said, oh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, and, and to be fair to Gaffer, he, he called us all in in the morning and um, apologised for it. Yeah, it was crazy. Gordon says to me that they reckoned that it was just you and Wally on a motorbike and a sidecar with a cup. <laughs> For the presentation in Aberdeen, because <laughs> nobody else deserved it. Oh, no. I know, I know. You have phoned them a few times though and said you've still got that medal, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, l listen, it was, um, you know, one of these these moments that go down in history. And, uh, you know, the, the thing was we won and, and of course, the, the team were brilliant. And, um, you know, Willie and I sometimes... We we all we all we'd, we'd brilliant um, rapport in terms of with with the whole defence and saying you know we keep the ball in it and yeah. that, that is that is our vital um, role in this particular football club and we pitch in with a goal now and again a set piece or something but we the, our main job is the opposition nil yeah and um, you know obviously can't do it all the time but. And it gives, it gives everybody, all the creative players, a chance to uh, win the game for us. And we had some brilliant creative players. And with that in mind, you as a manager will know better than anybody, building a successful side is all about the spine. You've got Leighton, yeah. great goalie. You've got you two at the heart of the defence. Mm -hmm. You've talked about creative players. When you looked ahead of you, what filled you with confidence? What players did you look at and think, oh, magic, we've got them. You know, if we can keep that nil, these guys will win it for us. Yeah, yeah, uh, and you know, Stuart Kennedy came in one game at half time, um, at Petardry, I think it was, and we, I don't know if Dingus would have told you this one, but we came in at half time and Stuart is like, guys, you're allowed to score if you want, you know, up front there. Yeah. Um, we we kind of keep the ball out of the net forever at the back, this <laughs> is Kennedy, you know, and uh, you're allowed to score, and, and it triggered the boss, and he had a, a goal, a, a blast, and Mark, Mark McGee, um, Dingus had uh, done a strop and took his tap off and says, hey, oh, I'm, I'm OK, I'm looking out of the second half, and um, so we're looking at the bench and that, and they were, but we lost the mighty McGee, and um, all of a sudden, the boss says to Archie, I hey, get him back out of the showers. Back on. <laughs> so I went, Mate, I'm not going on, you know. <laughs> thing, thing is, I'm not going on. And so he goes back out the second half and uh, we won 1 0, gets the score. <laughs> Maggie. Yeah. So uh, we, we did keep the ball out of the net, but um, we did also get Stuart Kennedy's demands that he scores, that yeah. somebody up front scores, and Dingus did. And ahead of you, when I look at that team and I think of the quality, yes, striking, obviously. Mm -hmm once he'd done the swap deal, Peter Weir's in there. The much, um, I think, underrated Dougie Bell. Yeah, Dougie was, was um, you know, absolutely brilliant dribbler. And you just could not get the ball off him. And the game in, the game in Munich was 0-0, um, the, the, the I'm sure, that 
that that night Dougie took enormous pressure off everybody with his, his mazy runs and stuff, and it, it, that was a real feature of his um, skills. What a, a tremendous technician he, yeah. he, and manipulator of the ball. Yeah, as you get ready for the the anniversary, um, I think if anything, you know, you always hope that all your all the teams there, there will be a tremendous amount of emotion with, with uh, no tatty there. I mean, I think everybody would be looking, thinking, mm -hmm. it'd be great to see Neil there. I know the youngest of the, the squad, and he was such a wonderful bloke, and um, <laughs> I kept in touch with him all, the, all throughout the years, when I was up to Aberdeen, gave him a shout, and, um, and you know, to lose tatty quite, it's you know, quite emotional to to lose your, your youngest player and uh, who had done so much for the club. And when I first went to Petardry, um as a young boy, I was I was sort of out in the car park training, and I seen the the white the curls, the plane he he had the tennis I think it was, and I'm saying God look at that guy. He says who's that? See and the, the team and they says, Well he's a young guy coming through, sixteen or something, sixteen or seventeen at the time. And I said, Woof, he looks phenomenal. Beautiful um uh, you, you know, technical player. Yeah. And um because Wally and I were centre of defence and had formed we had such a great uh, partnership, you know, Tati wasn't going to get in, in that position and, and uh he turned into a kind of enforcer in midfield, you yeah. know, and a, dri a driver, you know, was really uh, good on the ball as well. And um, when everybody had tipped him to be uh, like a Franz Beckenbauer uh, centre back, and and um, you know, Willie and I kind of made sure that nobody else was going to take our positions. And, yeah. And that, that was what I remember about Neil, you know, in, the, in that car park that day, I, I said, woof, that's some level of young footballer and I said, we're going to have to up our game to, to be able to play for this team and, and make this club even better. Yeah, and and one of my favourite memories is uh, is the fact that the boys all tell me that uh, Fergie had him one week like a coiled spring as Celtic were coming up to Pataudry. Uh, <laughs> it's got to be the fast. It's got to be the fastest booking of all time on Charlie Nicholas, has not it? Oh, I. It um, <laughs> was brainwashed that whole week, and every morning I think that, that he tells tells uh, he, well he told the story every time he was up on stage and. Um, Every morning the shout was Cooper office now. Uh, that whole week, Tuesday, Cooper office now, and it was Charlie Nicholas, right? You know, go to put like, the grips on him, and every single day. <laughs> and then it, so I'm saying, well, we'll sort of Charlie when he comes <laughs> in, into your territory, Willie and I. <clears throat> but I'd no, I'd no idea that Charlie was going to get bluttered. <laughs> By Tati in the first five seconds, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> oh, and it and uh, well, Charlie was quite quiet after that. Yeah, I'm so I'm not <laughs> he, surprised. He softened him up for we, for Willie and I. <laughs> um, the run, I mean, Sion was just a precursor to what was about to unfold. I mean, you absolutely battered them. Um, I think the job was was done and dusted, and then it's. It's, it's Dinamo Tirana. Was there a sense, I mean, obviously domestic dominance and, and surprising everybody and winning the league um, would have been the thing that rocked everybody and everybody would have taken notice of it. Was there a sense in your mind that European football you could make an inroads? I, I always think that the, the, the greatest learning curve for you guys was, you know, maybe getting, for example, that pasting Liverpool. off Liverpool, yeah. you know? I know, I, you, you took the words out of my mouth, that... That, that's um, we, we, at that time I didn't think, okay, we're going to dominate Europe because we get thrashed off Liverpool. Yeah, but it was a a German game, I think maybe a year later or something, and um, we, we'd lost. And I'd seen how shattered the boss was. I last out the dressing room, and he was kind of just uh, hovering in the corner, in the corner with his head down, and I, I thought, boss, I think. I said, boss, we better go. And, you know, imagine me trying to cheer the boss up, but uh, it was more that I think we're getting even getting better in Europe with every game. 
And, you know, I didn't say I was going to win a European trophy, but I, I kind of just felt that we were getting better and better. And uh, the Liverpool experience, that experience, it may have been in Frankfurt or something like that, and um, getting the pace in for Liverpool. I mean, they, so the Scottish boys in that Liverpool um, team, they, they wound them up to fever pitch because I think a lot of, he thought, I think Graham and Hanson Kenny thought a lot of their the dressing room was a lot blasé about facing us, but so they we cannot lose to this <laughs> Scot these, these Scots, you know. Yeah, and uh, they 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 battered us, you know. But it was a great experience, and and Kenny gave me a dig in the guts when uh, I was blocking him, trying to block him in every run, you know, and and uh, he's half the boys. If it was, if VAR was in the way, they'd be naff. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, that, that part that you mentioned there, that psychology of the players and you maybe saying to the gaffer, hey, we're, you know, we're getting better, we're on the, on the move, you know. Um, that year, we're in 83 now, you've got a team that's looking special, you've got pl players that can come off the bench as well. Um, yeah, yeah, we... we we had a great team and Stuart Kennedy obviously didn't make it and uh, but he was you know put on the bench and a great gesture for the manager and um, we we knew that we could bring anybody on you know to and make the team even stronger or if, if there was people flagging a wee bit but um, I don't know it was amazing it's just to think that you know, the night before with the quiz, we we, we was taking our mind off the actual final, making sure everybody slept well, and and then to to beat the the mighty Real Madrid, it still seems like a far fetched story, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, it does. And and again, one of those stories that you know, game by game, stage by stage, you're looking at the team, the way they're playing, the goals they're getting, the way you defended. You talked about the the highs of Munich. I mean, was Tirana and Poznan were they tough? Um, in your in your memory, did you have any <coughs> special game plan insight into it, or was it just a case that the team was growing in confidence and you knew you knew what to do? Yeah, it was it was more a, a case of at some stage we knew we we could handle these teams, and uh, we, it was just kind of as if it was ingrained in your your brain, you know that we we. They could be difficult, but we there is no way that they will stop us. And and of course, when you you, you meet the big teams like Bayern, and uh, then we're up a level again, Real Madrid in the final. But uh, the, the teams previously, then they, they were sticky, you know. Yeah. Um, Apart from Watershy, Watershy was, um, you know, the, the the brilliant home performance, five one and. I remember the Sir Alex used to invite the old pensioners in to watch training and stuff, and get bring them in the back. There was a wee room at the back, and where he gave them tea and that. And uh, one of them was waiting on me the, the day after the five one, and he said, "That away goal could be dodgy." <laughs> 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 yeah, motivating yourself for the return leg was probably the biggest thing because there weren't there would have been that psychology of the job's done. I, yeah, I, I know. I it, it was, but yeah, we'd gone there and probably didn't do it because we we never lost a game up to to that point. To that point, yeah. Game in Belgium, and uh, yeah, again. Fast forward, and that was the stadium where I, I was coaching Gank. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing how these things go around, as you, yeah. you you know, full circle. Just on that point, you mentioned the the away game where Dougie Bell and the, and the team played so well against Bayern Munich. What's your memories of the the game at Petodre? Because you played such a key part in it as well. You know, mm -hmm. you, Aberdeen classic for if it wasn't a free kick that he's had practiced it would be your late run into the penalty box as well and in, in, in Gothenburg as well as mm -hmm. it, what happened against Munich I mean what was your memories of that night was was there a genuine sense well you know we can take them well it was just a, a, a kind of preaching for the boss in terms of 
you've got to win this game. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the score is. You've got to get one more goal than them uh, because of the nil-nil draw and the, the the possibility of opposition winning in away goals. Yeah. Uh, and that was the mantra uh, all, all the way through. Whose uh, fault was it that they didn't pick up Augenthaler? <laughs> well, we, we knew the big one was capable of um, the, the long rangers. Yeah. And, but he's a good player and good players manipulate themselves into a situation where it, it, they try and get at least one chance at, at, at that. And uh, we'd done really well over two legs to stop him and, and only getting one shot <laughs> of and, and unfortunately it was a goal but it was a goal that um, just made us say that we've got to get a goal back and then get ahead of them yeah. and the, the, the main thing is get one more goal than them and that was the, like that was the innermost thing I felt in my head yeah have you ever witnessed an atmosphere like it? no I, you know it was but Georgia was absolutely rocking and um, okay there was the, the the groans and moans when you, you you lose the goals you go behind and people I'm sure in the commentary were saying there well that's it now and I think big Jock Brown yeah that's exactly it and it's all over now <laughs> <laughs> um, and Bayern you know we'll get back and you, you know the, the, the absolute um, determination of that team that I played in and Sir Alex built was um, phenomenal. The, the determination just to say, well, hey, we get a goal and then we get another one. Yeah. We got to win. Yeah. Within two minutes though? I know, I know, I know. Um, yeah, well, that was, yeah, that, 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 that was kind of pretty fr pretty much frightening. But, uh, you know, the, you see the, the ball getting carried up to the halfway line, the, the boys are, I, th I think we actually did it when we got, the, the third goal as well. Yeah, we were, I think we ran back with it again, thinking well, let's, let's get a make fourth. it fourth. Yeah. <laughs> just, just just to make sure. But um, but that time, that nowadays you would you'd be saying right, kick the ball into the stands. Yeah, you know? kill time. Yeah, kill time. Yeah. Um, so that game, uh, we did talk about. You know, Vottershire might have been a, a wee bit easier on you, but that game highlighted one guy in particular, and John Hewitt. It just seemed to be one of those talisman all the way. You know, he scores that goal, you know, and it's a precursor to what's going to unfold in Gothenburg. What was he like? Hey, Johnny. Um, God, the, <clears throat> you know, John John was an exceptional young player. At, and again, you know, it's the Alec Ferguson school of you know, young players, you know, like the Man United guys that he produced. And uh, way back in his days, and early early days when people were, were saying that he would probably lose his job, you know, and he, he showed it again. But he, that's, he he always had an interest in the, the the boys' clubs who was running them. The but also going to see all the young boys playing, and um, you know, get forming his opinions. Then these guys were training with. 19, 18, 19, 20, and um, the speed and the, the skills of Johnny Hewitt and he, he, that left peg, you know, fantastic. And, and, and for him to get those precious goals, then you know, he's, he's in the annals and uh, absolute legendary Scottish player, uh, never mind Aberdeen player. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, when you associate that whole run um, all the way to the final, and then of course the final itself. Let's get to the final then. John McMaster said to me, Fergie, as ever, always looking for any little edge that he could get. Jock Steen was there with you? Yeah, he, he, you know, it was, a, it was a great coup for him to, to bring uh, Jock and, um, you know, to meet the opposition manager. And, and uh, you know, he was, oh, what's this, you know? <laughs> Why is this, 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 Top man in Scotland, the, the legendary European Cup winner here as well, and and it was to just to reinforce the importance and it made it feel big for us, you know. Yeah. It, well, it was already big, but it made it feel like um, we're in superstar kind of country now, and 
Now this is, you know, something that we that has to inspire you as well. And, yeah. and having Jock was was uh, another bit of inspirational um, work by Alec Ferguson. I looked at their team: Johnny Metcott, Steely is in there as well, uh, Juanito. They were they were a right good team. What can you remember? Uh, Santiana, what Santiana? Um, yeah, Santiana. Yeah, uh, yeah. It wasn't, you know, as if it was a. a Dumpling of a team, uh, Real Madrid. Yeah. When you mention those names, you, these were all kind of um, international household names, and so we we knew <clears throat> that we were facing. I think we we were the last team to beat Real Madrid in a European final. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's something to hold on to, isn't it? Yeah, uh, and yeah, there was fantastic players, fantastic names in there re who represented their countries, and we. We, we, I don't know what the bookies' odds would have been at the time. Yeah, um, but you wouldn't have been high to win it. I mean, did you have an inferiority complex? No, and I, I mean, in the in the the, the um, tunnel, the boys were all Real Madrid players were strangely quiet. You know, yeah. we were like kind of ranting and raving. You know, it's kind of man. You know, and and uh, there was a a newspaper next day that. That um, one of the Madrid players, he was says he was looking at the Aberdeen players, and not one of them had a full set of teeth. <laughs> 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 or I, I may have been the back minute again, but um, it, it was it was in the tunnel, and um, you know, big to give with the grin and his his front teeth missing. I think that he probably <laughs> He's meant. I, th anyway, I think he? he probably meant Doogie. Uh, yeah, so again in the tunnel, come on in and. and Trying not to kind of look at the the opposition, but you could see that they they were a wee bit apprehensive, you know. Yeah. And saying, What's this? You know, these guys are screaming and shouting like banshees. Yeah. And, and uh, anyway, the the rest is history. Did he have Did he have a special team talk? Did he need to have a special team talk? Can you remember? <sighs> no, no, not not really. I mean. Uh, the the thing that I always remember is the simple things in terms of score. Um, we you've just we've got the the um, goal scorers in our side yeah. to make um, opportunities, and it was about the uh, not not having five opportunities. It, the clinical finishing was absolutely the key. The of course there was a set piece involved and these were things we practiced yeah and when they come off you know and in, in a game such as that magnitude then you know that is obviously the art of uh, what you do in the training ground yeah i mean he, it, it was it was a terrible night for playing a final wasn't it yeah well, well again I, I was always out in the, the pitch longer than the players i, I was you know and to make sure I got a real long warm up, and um, I came in, and one of the things I said in the dressing room was, "Guys, when you're passing the ball, it's sticking in the water." I said, so you're going to have to like chip it, and um, or you know just get your foot under it. And uh, of course, I was a vic on the pitch, the actual game itself. I was a victim of my own <laughs> advice, and and. Um, but it was it was an instinct of you know back in the day you could pass the ball back to the goalie the goalie could pick it up of course um, that's not a feature in football nowadays uh, thankfully and um, it was totally at ninety nine times out of a hundred it would have been safely into Jim Sands but stuck in the mud yeah and I, and I'd rolled I'd, I kind of hit it firmly you know but it was it stuck in the mud and um, big Jim. Got there just too late. Santiana nip, nipped in uh, penalty, and uh, honestly, I, I was still. We we won, We just won the European Cup Winners Cup, and I didn't crumble. I didn't crack in the second half. I concentrated. I didn't. It wasn't in my mind. But after the game, that was all I could think of, you know? and I, I was feeling sorry for myself. And we've just won the European Trophy, and I've got a medal, winners medal, and I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder what the, the, the press will be saying about me now, the papers, the, the punters. Um, but then, you know, the, the good part of it uh, says, 
said, um, you, it was meant to happen. You just made yourself a legend. It was meant to happen, you yeah. know. It you, you, had to happen for you to win that cup. And I'll say, well, so I'll take that. Did you believe you were going to win it when it hit extra time? Did you have that sense? We, we'd played so well, Gordon Sack, and um, many years later, Gordon said to me, do you know what, I've just watched uh, our, that, our game for the first time ever. He says, we, were, we absolutely battered them. <laughs> and uh, God, I said, Gordon, I don't even think I've watched it all again, the whole thing again. Wow. You know, I've watched wee bits and pieces, but I don't think I've gone through the whole game, but Gordon says, Alec, we gave him a doing, and, and um, extra time. You know, it was it was one of them. You you you're uh, really kind of thinking this. You know, Real Madrid have got fantastic experience in these these occasions, and um, you know, can we do it? You know, and that, so you, just that wee frame of. But we stuck to our task. We stuck to everything that we'd done well, and we 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 were never going to be breached. There was a free kick that. That they hit near near the end, but um, it, w it went past the post, thankfully, and it would say a relief. And you know, Johnny here. Yeah, talk me through that goal. What were your memories of it? Because Dingus's cross is sensational. Well, Mark, Mark was great. He, he did. He was very clever. Great runs he, he did, and he he would um, not only be a centre forward, but he did. You know these these bendy runs where he would go down and behind fullbacks, and that's what he did. You know, yeah. and and he, you know all of a sudden Mark McGee's out there like that Peter Weir. No, that's Mark McGee, and and he makes that that ploughing run. You know, ploughing through the pitch, and and uh, his cross was incredible. Yeah. And and uh, you know to think that that wasn't the Peter Weir, that was Mark McGee. It was centre forward then out there, and. And uh, Johnny, just super. They caught. I don't think he like getting called a super sub, but but uh, Johnny was certainly spectacular sub that night. Yeah. And, uh, to to get that winning goal, homegrown Aberdeen boy and um, history maker. Yeah. Just before we finish, couple of things. Um, did you sense even then? Uh, every time I, I speak to. Like Lisbon Lions, like the Barca Bears, suddenly did you sense legendary status? Did you know that what you'd achieved was something that would live with you forever? Yeah, it was probably more the next day. You know, when when we went back to Aberdeen, got on the bus, and then you know going through the it was all surreal. You know, the through the city with with uh, the cup and the thousands that that lined up. The city and the, you know, right, right from the, the Aberdeen Airport, and thank God this is. Now, when you're looking back, you're you're saying, "Wow, well, you know, all the other teams that have done these things really treasure it." And uh, you know, so I think it's truly fitting that um, you know the the Aberdeen Gothenburg guys are seen as legends. Yeah, absolutely. It's Scottish football. Yeah. And, uh, and European football. Well, absolutely. I think we were voted the, the best team uh, that that year uh, at the, in the the rankings. Yeah. Have you still got the gold medal? We'd, we'd won the, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, definitely, yeah. Yeah, uh, because I think it was, I think it was a French magazine mm -hmm. that conducted the poll that you're talking about and every, every one of you would have got a gold medal from Adidas. All right, um, to voted the best yeah, European one. side. Uh, Check your loft. <laughs> it's in a safe. It's in a safe. In, a, in the bank. Bro. Bro. So nobody come to my house <laughs> trying try to find it. <laughs> um, I suppose the team's special. Last point, how special was Fergie? Well, nothing like him I've ever, you know, come across. So great managers um, leading up. Sir Alex and, and legends as well, Ali McLeod and who signed me and um, you know Billy, who was a fellow centre half, gave me loads of brilliant tips and and then to to get get Alec Ferguson and win all those trophies and you know to you suck the old firm a wee bit and uh, for for a decade was um, you know pretty much unheard of and phenomenal and. 
we all, we all know about Sir Alex and uh, I still try to keep in touch as much as possible and go down to the odd game every every pick a game during the year and hopefully I can still uh, do that for many years to come although he's, he's inundated with fright and um, you know amount of people who win these these raffles and things like that and get 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 to go to a game with Sir Alex so he, he must be a bit puffed out of that I was just about <laughs> to say you. how would you well, like he'll to he'll be, he'll be, he'll be you know, when he gets my phone call yeah um, oh, that's my cliche again <laughs> <laughs> how would you like to be remembered how would I like to be remembered oh, God I mean just as, as a my guy who done his job and uh, done it well and and to get the, the amount of trophies that we won I don't I think we can say it's not being too shabby absolutely um I'm looking forward to the Gothenburg night it should be special Aye. there's going to be a lot of great Aberdonians there wallowing in nostalgia from your point of view how good is it going to be to see all the boys back together I'm sure you'd love to see everybody um life takes you down a a road that sometimes you don't get your wishes, but there's the majority of them will all be there. How special will that be? Yeah, it'll be quite amazing. And and Gordon and I have have um, you know trying to do some uh, calls and the video messages and stuff to with the guys and keeping everybody up to speed. And so, but the the one thing is to get everybody together again. And Gordon's idea was initially can we organise a big dinner a golf club or something like that get everybody boys play golf and get all the wives you know we, we we're on the back nine <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess that's what he's, he's saying we're on the back nine and um, it'd be brilliant for us all to get together and and you know as, as other clubs have organised um, fundraisers for the players etc um, back in the days we didn't earn that much and so now it's turned in uh, something pretty big yeah absolutely uh, we'll have a fantastic celebratory couple of nights um, both for the European Cup Winners Cup and for the Super Cup yeah absolutely it's something never to be forgotten it's an absolute joy I do hope you've enjoyed wallowing in the nostalgia uh, with Alex McLeish because it was a very special year as Alec mentioned there uh, we talked about the Cup Winners Cup Aberdeen went on and won the Super Cup as well. Uh, when you think of the Trophy Hall, it is something that, will it ever be repeated? Who knows? A special team, a special man at the heart of that defence with Willie Miller. Thank you very much to Alex McLeish for joining us on this one-to-one.